Guys, I haven't bought tomatoes in so long, but I have bought tomatoes. This is two bushels of tomatoes that I got yesterday at the farmer's market. Uh, they had bushel boxes, half bushel boxes for about 18 bucks. Um, I think I paid 20 for the orange ones. Um, but they look really good. I just laid them all out in one row like yesterday because I didn't get to these yesterday. So today I'm going to start working on those tomatoes. A lot of them, I'm just gonna core them and score them and put them in the freezer uh, because that's what I just automatically do even if I'm not trying to store them for a long time. It just makes them so much easier to skin. But I'm also gonna make a couple batches of salsa. That was originally what sent me looking for tomatoes in the first place was to be able to make salsa. I didn't really get enough uh, out of my garden this year to be able to do that. Also got a bushel of purple hole peas. So we shelled half of those yesterday and um, got them ready to can. So let this serve as a reminder to you that you don't have to grow the produce in order to preserve it. Obviously, I like preserving my own homegrown produce, but that's not always a possibility. So, you know, I go into the farmer's market that food's probably not organic. I did find some bugs in the peas and I was like, all right. <laughs> the things you never thought you'd be happy for. <laughs> I was just glad because I was like, well, they haven't been blasted to oblivion with pesticides, so that's great. I have yet to find organic bulk food. If there is a source for that that is, you know, at all economical, I would love to be able to do that. But um, to me, it was that or buy them at the store and I would rather buy food that was grown 30 minutes from here by a real person who is uh, supporting their family through farming. What do you think, dear? So we're still having unseasonably cool weather. Got a bunch of seeds in the ground and I'm headed down here this morning to get some water on them uh, just to make sure that the soil's not drying out before they get germinated. So that's less of a concern right now with the uh, weather being cooler because obviously it's not just baking the soil every day. Let's see if we got anything coming up here yet. Nah, that's too early. I've been gardening for a long time. I still sow seeds and come out and check them the next day. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't give you a reason for that. Here's a couple little dwarf pear trees here on the back corner of the greenhouse. Those look good. I have some irises on the front porch I meant to bring down here that I got from Shriners. And I wanna put them in on either side of this walkway because I know it's something that'll be nice and tall and green uh, when they're not blooming and really pretty when they are blooming. Look at this. This is a really pretty succulent called, I think it's called Mother to Thousands. Is that right? Does anybody know? And this thing will spread all over. I think a lot of people keep that as a house plant, but most succulents will survive over our winters. They're actually hardier than a lot of people realize, but I do live in zone eight, so. so. We stayed up way too late last night. It's actually not super early right now. I think it's something like eight o'clock. Um, that's pretty late for me. I'm usually awake before six. Um, but had a friend in town and we ended up staying next door at Papa T and Mimi's. Um, our neighbors, Terry and Lisa. I don't know when we actually left and went to bed, but Jeremiah and I and our friend were over there singing hymns and <laughs> reminiscing on old songs till the wee hour. What's up, Daniel? Tell me something good. Oh, man. Are you tired? <laughs> I'm a <little> tired. <laughs> But it's good to be awake and on this farm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Daniel's actually been out to the farm a couple of times, but we haven't made videos any of those times. <laughs> he stayed up too late singing those hymns. You did. A little mm. blessing. Garden blessing. <laughs> mm. They're so good. 
They're so good. Huh? They're so good. I gotta pick some holy basil to make sweet my tea this morning. The holy basil is turning into a basil hedge, and I'm just not mad about it. Look at that. Doesn't it smell so good right here? It smells so good. Here's my holy basil for Jeremiah's tea. If you by chance missed the video where we made holy basil tea, I'll put a link to the recipe down below. It's so good. It is so good. I, I say that it's life changing and I know that sometimes I have a flair for the dramatic, but I mean, I felt like I was life changing. I mean, I need, <laughs> I need that in my life. <laughs> you get it, man. Get it what? Taking pictures. You didn't know you were coming out early in the morning after staying up in the wee hours for a little photo sesh, did you? No. I was just walking through here and like the okra backdrop and the aisles and the zinnias. I was like, this is a good place for a photo. So Daniel, <clears throat> what is you, what day is it? The September single? 13th. September 13th is releasing his new single. Some of you have heard that song, Garden on the Inside. Mm -hmm. Good place for a photo. For that oh, yeah. You notice I did, I put you in that pretty part, not over here. <laughs> it's still pretty. It's still pretty. I like it. Maybe just a le less picturesque, kind of pretty. Maybe a little wild and crispy. Wayward. Yeah, this is Celosia, isn't that neat? It is, I like it. It feels really cool. You, you know, it looks like a, like, undersea coral. Like, oh, yeah. Above the sea. It's also called coxcomb. It kind of has a rooster comb look to it. So the chickens got the remnants of the trellises that got taken down. You see there's the Kajari melon trellis. Those melons were underripe whenever we pulled them out. So they're turning orange now, but just because they've been in here, the plant had shriveled up. It was time. You can see the trellises are just in here. They'll scratch through them, everything will dry off, and then we'll take them off and put them up and store them. We do leave some trellises up over the winter sometimes. It just depends on if it makes sense, but it's not hard to take them down and put them back up. That is just darling. I already took a sip of it and messed it up. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right, guys. It's later in the evening. Daniel got on the road back to Alabama. He's been here uh, for the weekend. We had a really, really enjoyable weekend. Uh, didn't shoot much video, obviously, but I wanted to get that little bit this morning because you guys have been asking about him and uh, we haven't shot anything the last couple times. He's been here. We got to make some music and, and write some songs while he was here this time, which is really cool. And... Um, there will be more of that in the future. So, I'm back in the kitchen now. A little more awake than I was on the first half of this vlog. I was editing that a little while ago. I was like, man, I really did just drag out of the half-asleep morning outside. So, <laughs> you're welcome for that. <laughs> now, I am working a little bit on these tomatoes. I'm not going to do a whole lot of the tomato stuff right now, but I did want to kind of just show you guys what I was doing. So, here are the peas that uh, we shelled yesterday. And I'm gonna be pressure canning those. So we got those, uh, Daniel was here and we went with my friend Hannah, who you guys have heard a lot about her. I can't remember if Hannah's been on my vlog. I know she's been on Wilder still, but we got Hope, our cow, from her. And we all went together yesterday to the State Farmer's Market, and then we came home and shelled peas. So um, I'm actually gonna get those going in the canner i got to put some broth and some seasoning and stuff on top of those and then can them. Over here, I have two trays of my roasted salsa. And I do have that recipe also on my blog. So I will link that also. So I'll, I will put the basil tea recipe and the roasted salsa recipe. I'm just going to tell you, like, not to toot my own horn or anything, but that roasted salsa recipe is the bomb.com. Like, it is absolutely amazing many moons ago when i never had a big enough garden to grow enough tomatoes to really make a lot of anything i was buying just store-bought tomatoes and i had this idea to roast them to try to add more flavor to them because obviously store-bought tomatoes do taste a little like disappointment that salsa recipe sort of like was born out of that and it is a, it really is a really great salsa recipe all right so now what i'm doing is pouring and scoring these tomatoes this is very easy i will probably do another run to the farmer's market and do this many tomatoes again 
I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Um, but what I'm thinking is, is that I'm going to do about half of these cord and scored in freezer bags and then do salt, a lot of salsa, can that. And then I'm going to go get more tomatoes, take these all out, process them, and then reuse the bags to kind of put the next one in. So what coring and scoring is, and this is useful for a couple of different reasons. One, if you have a small garden, and you're not getting enough of a harvest at a time to do anything with let's say you're just getting a handful of tomatoes here and there you can do this and then save them until you have enough to actually process and make something out of um, tomatoes do go bad fast they spoil fast and so this is a nice way to just save some more time in processing them so that they don't get mushy and gross before you get to use them so coring you're just going to take your tomatoes and cut this middle part out um, this is where you will grow an appreciation for certain varieties because some varieties have really massive cores you don't have to get the entire thing but you mostly just want to get that stem and as much as you can of like the hard white that's behind it and then scoring I'm just going to cut this X into the bottom of my tomatoes and then I'm going to put them in in a Ziploc bag. Now this is a paste variety, so they're not super juicy, but um, like these orange ones, I think they've got a little more juice. Interestingly, these do have a really small core. These are probably some sort of production hybrid, I'm assuming, uh, and that's something that a lot of times hybrids will breed for. I actually ate one of these and they are very good. They do not have quite the full richness of like a homegrown tomato that I'm harvesting in the heat of the day out on the vine and then eating it right away. And I'm just going to cut these cores out, put these in the bag. If you have a yucky spot in your tomato, like let's say there's just like a, I've got a couple here that have like kind of bruisey spots. If you have anything moldy or cut like that, just cut it off. Um, as long as it's not penetrating through the inside of the tomato, it's fine to cut yucky spots off. And what I'm doing with the coring and scoring is I'm going to fill this bag up. I'm going to fill multiple bags up because there's a lot of tomatoes. I'm going to put it in the freezer. And as soon as they're solid frozen, like you could do this one morning and then process the tomatoes that evening if you wanted to. If you don't have a lot of freezer space, um, you don't have to leave them in the freezer for any period of time for this to work. They just need to get solid frozen. And then you pull them out and actually you just take them and they will slip right out of these skins. Um, what I usually do at that point, once they have frozen, you're going to have a deal of juice in your bag because they're going to kind of mush a little bit. They lose a lot of their cellular walls when they freeze and then thaw. And so the texture is gone at that point. You're not going to make a tomato sandwich out of these, but you can then very quickly peel them, drain off excess juice. You can save the juice if you want to make it for something else. But as far as just canning like diced tomatoes, or um, you can then take the skins off some of the extra juice. And I like to empty a few bags into like a big roaster oven, slow cook them, add in some uh, sauteed onions and garlic and herbs and make spaghetti sauce. And uh, you can can that. The ball canning book suggests add a little bit of citric acid or lemon juice. And that's what makes it safe if you're dealing with like lower acid varieties. I do know a lot of people that don't do that. That's just something that you'll have to decide on your own, the risk that you want to take. But yeah, coring and scoring just like this saves a lot of time. I was talking to my friend Hannah yesterday and she said this is now how she does. They used to sit and peel all of the tomatoes. Um, I like the roasting recipe also because I don't peel those. I just put the skins on in the oven and it helps break them down and then I'm going to put that all through the food processor and so I leave the skins on for that. Um, for spaghetti sauce I, t I do like the skins to be off so this allows me to do that and if you really want to like make the most and not waste anything when you do pull all of these skins off of your tomatoes after you thaw them you process the tomatoes either canning or turning into sauce or whatever you can take all those skins and lay them out in your dehydrator dehydrate them and then grind those down into a powder which you can then add back into I mean any number of things that you want to add just a more rich tomato flavor for. I actually have tomatoes I'm processing. I didn't grow them but that's okay. I will still be very proud and very thankful to have 
jars of tomato products lining my pantry walls even if they didn't grow in my garden i feel really good that these are fresh and local and that i'm still getting to have complete control into what goes in my products so i hope this helps you guys and saves you some time hey ben what's up hi there oh you know, someone told me that's a sign of honor when a dog does that around you that or maybe he just needs a good stretch all right guys, well thank you so much for hanging out with me today on this sweet little vlog. I'll put the recipes mentioned down below. If you don't already know this, I have been working over the last several months. I've got a media team that's helping me get a lot of recipes converted where they can be more accessible. I know that I prefer to have recipes written down where I can like print them out and reference them. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do. Take a lot of my recipes and get them on there. And if you're not already, definitely sign up for our email list. I'll send you two emails a week. I'll never sell your information or anything like that. But I want to be able to access you guys directly. That way I have the ability to do that. I don't have to depend on another platform. Um, and then also I'll send you relevant information like when it's tomato season, I'll send you tomato recipes and things like that. So um, also um, I will link down below where you guys can find Daniel and uh, check him out for that single release. Daniel does worship music if you're new here. Um, he's He's been our friend for a really long time and uh, we've done music together over the years and he, um, he's got that new single coming out and sometime in the future we are going to be uh, releasing some stuff together as well. So that information will be down there. Thank you again for hanging out with me. I bless you. Until next time.